what's up everybody and welcome back to my channel I'm so glad you guys could come and in this video I'm gonna be showing you guys all about how to do a seascape it's gonna be super exciting it is part of my black history series it is the fourth installment in my black history series featuring african-american artists William Edward Scott yes yes and yes this is a painting that he did quite some time ago he was a muralist in his lifetime and he painted throughout all of his life and he's a wonderful artist I think he has some paintings in the Minnesota uh, like Museum of Art or something like that so I'm gonna be bringing you guys such wonderful succulent activities for this particular tutorial the rest of the portion of this tutorial is going to be in a time-lapse form and if you guys are new around here what's poppin my name is danielle i am the artist behind creative girl of color and welcome to my studio i'm so glad you guys could be here comment below let me know how you feel about this sort of uh content if you're feeling it if you love it be sure to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for all notifications. Everything that I'm using in this tutorial is going to be down in the description box below. As well as color palette, links, social media. Let's get social. If you decide to attempt this tutorial, tag me. Tag me up on Instagram. Hit a girl up. Let me see what you got going on. And if I'm loving it, I'll definitely throw it up into my stories so I can tell everybody, the whole world, that I was loving your project. So, I've decided to do this on an 18 by 24 canvas, right? And this is uh, acrylic prime print canvas. I'm using acrylic paints in this particular video. This is beginner friendly. So, be sure to tag your friends and tell them that this is a lovely tutorial for you guys. And you can get this anywhere. I use some regular blue and white paint to kind of prime my background. I'm going to show you guys quickly um, my reference photo that I'm going to be using for this particular tutorial. This is my reference photo. This is from his beautiful painting that he did back in, I think, the 1900s, something like that, 1920s. Now, um, it was up in, it was in Haiti. That was the scene. So I'm going to set the scene for you. It was in Haiti, I think, 1920. 1900 around that time and he was observing the fishermen kind of fishing and things like that as the sun was going down he has some seagulls and other things in the background he has like a fun turtle and all the men lifting the turtle out of the water so this is going to be a pretty fun packed tutorial you're going to learn a myriad of different uh skills for um this for this piece it's going to be super fun and I'm going to be using um, all of these different colors for it, yeah? So if you guys are unfamiliar about color theory, if you need help with color theory, I'm going to link it up in the iCard for you guys so you guys can refer to my color theory video so you can get well-versed in the theory of color. And as I always say, when you find your passion, you find your purpose. And on this channel, it is my job to help you guys find your passion through art, right? Now, on this, this is, um, I actually printed out my reference photo. It is an 8 by 11 but you can print it out in any size that you want to print it out. If you decide to do this on, an eight, on um, a different size canvas, I would recommend that you do it on like a 16 by 24 um, sorry, a 16 by 20. I would recommend that you do it on a 16 by 20, 9 by 12, maybe uh, even an 8 by 10. You can kind of get away with, and you can use paper, any type of materials that you choose to use. I would love to see your different uh, perspectives on it. Now, let me touch a little bit, right? Because we need to touch a little bit on copyright. Make sure if you guys at home are attempting this particular tutorial and or if you decide to reproduce someone else's painting during black history month right or any month of the year be sure to 
do your research on copyright law because we want to be mindful and sensitive to other artists in the world and we want to make sure that we are abiding behind copyright law this particular piece is out of is within fair use it has been well over seven years since this piece was published and painted and the artist is no longer with us and of course I'm gonna be using this for educational services educational purposes something to bring to you guys lots of wonderful things to bring to you guys to show you like we can walk in his steps walk through his brush strokes right He's going to guide us through this painting and pretty much speak to us. And we're going to be able to give him a voice here on YouTube. So this is exactly a, a good platform and format for me to feature this type of piece. Right? But if you're going to be doing this at home, again, make sure you study your copyright law. And you are making sure that you are not copying anybody's paintings that is still alive and if you do make sure you tag them in it you ask for permission before you do it because don't say danielle said i can do it no no <laughs> danielle is not condoning any weirdness or whatever right because we need to be mindful and respectful of other artists right so i would never condone any type of uh unauthorized copying or reproducing of anybody's work right we're going to do it in the right way and this is the right way that you can kind of do it other artists have done it all around the world mm -hmm. since the beginning of time to basically learn and get a scope of where they need to be in the art world and to walk through old masters shoes and it is basically a good learning experience for you guys, right? Now, the fun part, right? Let's get into the colors. Colors, colors. Do the dance from colors. Ow. Colors, colors. All right. Okay, and here's my palette. I have a myriad of different blues, as you guys can see. I would definitely recommend that you guys get a different, get different types of blues for this particular tutorial. And for most tutorials or anything that you're doing that's going to involve a seascape. So I have ultramarine blue, I have cerulean blue, I have phalo blue, diox purple, raw umber. You can substitute that with um, brown umber if you don't have raw umber. As well as a little bit of quinacridone magenta, my favorite color. It is good mixing color. As well as... Uh, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, titanium white, and some unbleached titanium, which I'm probably going to use for the boat and highlights and different things like that when it involves doing skin tones. I have a myriad of different brushes here that I'm going to be using, and those are my favorite brushes that I use all the time. And you can use any brushes, any acrylic paints that you guys choose to use is all right with me. You know, whatever you're comfortable with, it's your painting, it is what's going to make you the most happy, right? I'm using a regular tearaway palette, but you can use whatever you like, right? Okay, so now I'm going to get into my sky. I'm going to paint a little bit of my sky in and do the rough sketch. So I'm going to pop you guys into the time lapse. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm starting to mix my colors. I did a little bit of cerulean blue and uh, yellow ochre and a little bit of cadmium yellow towards the bottom of my horizon line. Your horizon line is basically where the sky meets the land. And in this case, we're doing a seascape. So it's where the sky meets the water, right? So that's where you see the bottom piece where I'm putting a lot of cadmium yellow and a little bit of white and a little bit of cerulean blue to give me like, like that greenish, bluish, greenish tone. Because that's what was in the reference photo. I'm also popping in a little bit of a sun because that was also in the reference photo. And for the sun, I use, since it is the sunset, I used a little bit of white with cadmium yellow, yellow ochre. I blended it out because you want to make sure you have like a smooth transition. 
I'm putting a little bit of ultramarine blue at the bottom to indicate that that is my the beginning of my horizon line or my seascape in this um, case. Putting a little bit of white. I just added a little bit of white to my cerulean blue to give me that light blue to go towards the viewer. Because behind the bow, in the reference photo, you've seen that there was a lot of light. And that is also coming from the sun casting off in the water. Because you got to remember that water is reflective. So it's going to reflect everything around it. So that's what you want to think about when you're doing uh, water. So I'm just kind of reinforcing everything that's going into the sunset and the sky and things like that. Going in an oval circular motion. And remember guys, like when it comes to acrylics, it's all about layers, layers, layers. And if you feel like you made a mistake, you can always go back over it. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna get into the sketch pretty soon here, you guys. Now I'm just putting in a little bit of birds. Cause it had birds and seagulls in the background. And you can kind of practice doing that. Practice it on, on a uh, piece of paper before you try it. And now we're going to get into the sketch. So you can see I'm kind of using a color erase pencil as well as my white general charcoal pencil to get a rough sketch of my boat. And you can kind of practice this on paper if you don't feel comfortable doing it on your canvas. And the boat has kind of a tilt to it. So you got to kind of play around with it, tinker it around, see how you feel about it and so you can get that perspective down properly as well as you could probably use some tape also on your horizon line and on your boat to get your lines down properly use some tape before you start painting in your actual um, images and things like that it's good to put your base coats down your different layers in your backgrounds before you actually start painting in your images because it just makes for a whole better composition you can see i'm putting in the main characters try to study some anatomy books that's good and helpful to help you guys out through this process and putting in a little bit of birds and that is that you guys okay guys so we took a little break i'm done with the sketching portion of this so as you can see I kind of went based off my reference photo and I put in a lot of little details that's just a quick sketch I used a general's white charcoal pencil so um, I will link that below for you guys in case you want to pick that up those are really great or you could use just regular chalk but I kind of prefer the white charcoal pencil to regular chalk because it, it has less dust residue. So as you can see, I kind of sketched in the boat. I already did my background, right? Did my background. I did all of this here. I, I did my, my base coats pretty much for the sky. I mixed a little bit of cerulean blue um, a little bit of ultramarine and I use yellow ochre for the sky to give it kind of like that sunny feel because you got to think about it when um, Mr. Scott originally did this painting it was you know early on um, so they didn't have a lot of the modern colors that they have now so he would have probably used you know and it was an oil painting he would have probably used yellow ochre instead of the regular cadmium yellow but if you guys don't have cadmium uh, yellow ochre at home, you can always use whatever yellow you have, but just kind of try to tone it down as much as you can. And remember, the complementary color to yellow is purple, so that will give you, that will kind of tone your yellow down if you feel like your yellow is a little bit too bright. So, I pretty much already got everything in. Now, this is just the base coat. I just pretty much blocked this in. I'm gonna have to go back on top with um, my highlights for the water and things of that nature because as you can see there's a lot of highlights in the water um, you know so it's a lot of different things that we still got we still got a, quite a ways to go on this it took me about an hour 
probably to sketch this in. Now, for anatomy, if you guys are wondering about anatomy and all of that thing and all of those things, right? I would suggest that you practice, 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 right? That is the only way to get better at anatomy. That's the only way to hone your skills is to practice, practice, practice. And to also, you can also um, go on YouTube, right here on YouTube, and you can look at some drawing videos and things of that nature. Pick up an anatomy book from Amazon or, um, you know, your local library if you can't afford to get one from Amazon. And... You know, the funny thing is that Amazon, um, your local library has a lot of resources for artists that you just don't know about, that you just don't know about. Even the local thrift store, I've picked up a lot of art, art books, anatomy books, things like that from the local art store, I mean, uh, thrift store. So check out your local thrift store because you can get a lot of different resources there for like pennies on the dollar. You feel what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so I got everything kind of sketched in and we're ready to paint. I'm just going to go on top. You know, this is the best way to do it because, again, you guys, remember I said it's all about layers, layers, and layers, right? So just do the best you can, you guys. And let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to switch you guys into time lapse. So I'm mixing in my colors at this point, you guys. And I did a little bit of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, as well as unbleached titanium, a little bit of titanium white to fill in the panels on the side of the boat. For the top portion of the boat, I did ultramarine blue with a little bit of diox purple and um, a little bit of raw sienna, raw umber, I'm sorry, so that the top part can be a dark shade of blue. I am using Diox Purple and a little bit of Burnt Sienna for the shadows in between the panels because you want to have, you want to be able to differentiate between the different panels on the side of the boat. Now these are just base coats that I'm blocking in. I'm going to go back in on top with some lighter shades and I chose different shades of kind of Burnt Sienna and um, with a mixture of, of yellow ochre to kind of be able to differentiate between each one so I don't get confused, right? And now I'm doing a little bit of what they call negative spacing where I'm blocking in the dark parts, only the dark spaces of the boat to give the illusion like the people are sitting inside of the boat, which I mixed up a little bit of ultramarine blue, um, raw sienna or raw umber in this case or you can use burnt umber if you don't have raw sienna and that gave me a darker value i'm filling in a little bit of the birds because it had a lot of seagulls and stuff like that on the horizon you know what i mean now i am filling in the people the fun part now with the people i did only my regular i did my acrylic open and i used burnt sienna burnt umber a little bit of um magenta to get my um my mixture for my skin tone don't guys don't really don't overthink this like really don't because for this particular piece he you got to think about where he's sitting right from his vantage point which more than likely he painted the original artist painted this from life he's seeing this from a distance so as the sun is hitting their backs, right? That's why the front of them looks so dark. As the sun is hitting their backs, you're not going to be able to see from his advantage point their faces too much. So I wouldn't really worry too much about getting uh, details in the face and things like that. I just kind of did some rough block ends with my regular skin tone mixture, which they all happen to have a darker tone of skin. So I just did like a dark uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and, you know, uh, and keep it moving. You know what I mean? And just keep layering, though, because you want to make sure that they look full and lovely. You know what I mean? So now I am filling in the shorts and their shirts and 
all of that jazz. Now the shirts and the shorts, they they seem like they like pretty much run in the mill white. So I did a lot of grays and whites and greens and purples and light colors to kind of fill in all of those different tones of t-shirts and shorts. As well as um, the man that I'm filling in right now, he has a hat on. So you can't really see his face too much. Again, the sun is hitting him as well as the artist. So you're not going to be able to see much detail. You just want to kind of block in those silhouettes to give you the illusion that it is a full rich painting. Now I'm just putting in more shadows and highlights and things like that on the panels inside of the boat because as the sun hits you're going to still have a shadow from the people inside of the boat right i'm filling in my birds with a little bit of uh grays and yellow ochres and things like that play around with your tones you know get into your color mixing if you need help with uh color theory i will pop that up into the i card for you guys to help you out you know practice your color mixing it makes a big difference you guys now I'm just filling in the people. There was actually people in the water. So that was super dope, right? Like, wouldn't you love to be a fly on the wall, so to speak, to be in that? Like, I'm wondering where was he when he was actually painting this? Uh, well, this was actually in Haiti. But I'm like, was he in another boat or was he on land? What was really happening? So I got to walk through his steps in this painting and I feel super happy and super excited about that. I'm just filling in now the water. For the water, I did a lot of highlights, you guys. And the highlights for the water was pretty much a little bit of cerulean blue, white. And I took my blender brush and created those waves and you know highlights and ripples and things like that as well as my angle brush so play around with that you guys to get those different things you want to have a brighter highlight but you also want to make it blend and look realistic like actual waves right and also refer to your reference photo i'm filling in the little turtle the turtle i don't know the turtle was trying it <laughs> you know the turtle was kind of doing a lot all right so i for the turtle i did regular olive green which is a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed with um yellow ochre and a little bit of white and i played around with those different values of green to give me for the actual turtle and it had like crabs in the boat right so i i kind of just did little silhouettes silhouettes of a little bit of cadmium red and a little bit of yellow ochre. Of course, yellow ochre goes in everything because yellow ochre is the beast. That is the dope color of the scene, right? And I did all that, you know, um, to kind of give the illusion that there's actually crabs in the boat, right? Because these are fishermen. So I'm still just putting, I'm reinforcing a lot of those highlights and those deep, rich tones and stuff like that. Towards the back of the boat, I, that's pure browns and um, dark blues and things like that. Ultramarine blue as well as raw umber, or you can use a burnt umber. Now I'm just putting in his little stick that he has. And you want to keep layering, you guys. Keep layering. Keep reinforcing those values so that you can get the look that you're that you're trying to achieve. As well as I put a little bit of highlights um, on the actual people. And I kind of reinforce the sky and the sunset. Oh my God, you guys. And we're done. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Here is the finished product. It looks so gorgeous. I am so surprised on how it turned out myself, right? Because this was a whole new endeavor for me. I hope that William Edward Scott is proud of me. The ancestors love us. Yes. If you attempt this tutorial, don't forget to tag me on Instagram, right? I created Girls of Color. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.